so guys, a subscriber sent me along an article about Plague Incorporating uh, Incorporated and Plague including anti-vaxxers. What? Anti-vaxxers are stupid. Plague Incorporated developers, anti-vaxxers are stupid. What is this? Petition to add anti-vaxxers as a buff in Plague Incorporated. <laughs> All right. Uh, virtual anti-vaxxers probably won't survive long. A change.org petition calls them stupid and wants them to be buffs or a way to accelerate the spread of a disease in the game. All right. I don't know anything about gaming, but all right, let's just listen to a few minutes of this. Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I would like to take a look at Plague Inc. Plague Inc, uh, it's a really nerdy game, but basically the concept is that you are a pathogen, you're a disease, and your job is to take over the world and then exterminate it. Generally, in some cases, it's a case of uh, you want to turn the world into zombies, or in the case of simian flu, which is a tie-in to Rise of the Planet of the Apes, or Dawn, was it Rise? I don't know, whatever. You are supposed to kill off humans and make chimpanzees smarter. But yeah, all I've got right now is the bacteria. I've played this a lot on mobile, but obviously all of my achievements in that domain have not carried over. I'm just going to try this on normal difficulty and we'll come up with a suitable name for a disease. Um, Steve. Hey, Steve! Okay, Plague.ink, you are a new bacteria. To win, you must evolve and spread across the world, wiping out all humans in the ultimate plague. And that is the proper use of the word ultimate because it really would be the last plague if you killed off all the humans. So select a start location. I think I'm going to start in China. It's All right, you can check out this uh, video, this game, by clicking on the link below. Okay, Plague Incorporated. You can choose a virus or a bacteria to exterminate the world's people. Okay, um, well, I don't know any anti-vaxxer who's sitting around playing a game, and you call us stupid. Anti-vaxxers are stupid. Um, the buff, I guess, well, I guess the anti-vaxxers, including it in this game, means that they're going to be, um, yeah, here, are a game that lets you create a disease to wipe out the human race has decided to add, add anti-vaxxers to the mix. Uh, so I guess you could, you know, choose because you can choose all these different, you know, uh, you can choose bacteria, you can choose virus, you can choose how it's going to spread the pathogen, you can choose rodents to spread it, um, and I guess you can choose anti-vaxxers to spread it. So they agreed. Change.org received 10,000 plus um, signees. All right, all right, you spoke. We listened. The games, developers. All right, all right, you spoke. Here, here, Plague Incorporated, their, their Twitter page. Uh, you'll be happy to hear we're going to start figuring out anti-vaxxers soon. He's dying to try and get inside their heads. What the hell? I'm beginning to think that we are living in a simulated reality. I am beginning to think that we live now virtual reality and there's a game going on. And let's see who can kill who. Uh, you know, it's and everybody's pitted against one another. You know, you got the anti-vaxxers with the pro-vaxxers and go for it. And, and they're... The, the, you know, it's like they're pulling the strings from behind the curtain and they're watching us all in this sick game we're playing here. Um, you know, read these 
responses to this tweet. As an RN in public health who lives plague the board game, please make an evolution trait card for the possible expansion this summer. Dying to try, get inside their heads. Spoiler alert, it's empty. Our heads are empty? Yeah, I guess so. Anti-vaxxers are actually going to be mad about this and we will laugh. Holy shit. What are we living? What the hell are we living? Anti-vaxxer parents, when they see a popular 18th century disease, that's been nearly eradicated. Oh, fuck, yeah, spread it. Oh, my God. We're in deep trouble. This, I, I, yeah, I also saw other articles. Seven ways to talk to anti-vaxxers that might actually change their minds. And you know what? I, I don't know what to make of this, and I couldn't really engage in reading every bit of it, but, you know, they're talking about how you shouldn't vilify them, don't call them stupid, even though we are apparently stupid. Um... This week, Toronto Public Health warned that a young adult in the city had the measles after getting it while traveling. You know, it's like, uh, what, are, are we, am I reading, you know, like a description? Okay, this is the game. This week, Toronto Public Health warned that a young adult in the city had the measles after getting it while traveling. You know, it's like you're sitting there uh, uh, taking like a test or something or you know, you are playing a game. Um, so they've introduced this rule or, you know, this scenario for the game. I can't believe that. I, I just, I don't know what to make of anything anymore. So the seven ways is stop thinking of all people who don't vaccinate as anti-vaxxers. Um, keep cognitive biases in mind. <laughs> Worries around the safety of vaccines have existed as long as vaccines themselves, but much of the recent rise in anti-vaccination sentiment can be traced to a study. Oh, God. Andrew, I'm so sorry that you have been made, you know, the poster child of the uh, pro-vaxxers, you know. You've been debunked, Andrew, and, well... That's all you have to do on the pro-vaxxer side. Just, that's it. The, the Andrew Wakefield, he is used in, you know, news segments. You constantly hear this study has been debunked. It was pulled from the Lancet, but it wasn't initially. It was pulled when... The Lancet editor was inundated with pressure from Big Pharma to pull it. Andrew Wakefield, that was the study that connected the autism and the MMR vaccine. And in fact, you know, it wasn't... Um, what Andrew Wakefield was saying in the article that was published that we need to do more studies. This needs to be confirmed. That's what he was saying. It needs to be uh, confirmed. What I have done, Andrew Wakefield, in my study, we need to replicate it. We need to confirm it. No, they didn't do any of that. They just pulled it. And now they've like, Andrew Wakefield um, is like used. Oh, my God. I never knew the truth would be so hard. Um, so, yes, of course, his research been de debunked, thoroughly debunked. 
It was retracted. And he lost his medical license. Yes, that's what they do to people. They destroy them. They destroy them professionally, financially. They ridicule them. They shame them. Anyone who presents anything, you know, uh, I mean, all he did was a study and saw the connection and then said, we need to replicate this. We need to, we need to do further studying on this vaccine. That's all. That's it. That was enough. We're going to destroy him. Okay, for vaccine hesitancy, we can blame confirmation bias. Uh, the tendency to hold accepted, to only accept facts that fit our existing beliefs. Illusion or explanatory depth bias, which makes us believe that we know more about a subject than we do. Yeah, I haven't done any research really. I just did a tad bit. And then I just posted video after video after video on the same little tad bit that I did. My God. What the hell are we living here? Casual illusions, which encourage us to see cause and effect where there is none. <clears throat> study after study after study after study after study uh, on all of the adverse effects linked to vaccines. Studies, scientists, doctors, I mean, my God. In the videos, I'm not bringing it up again. I have a playlist. Please, you know, don't just say, well, where's your evidence? Go to my playlist. It's very clear. It, the playlist, vaccines. And you will see all of the evidence that proves that these vaccines are causing an awful lot of damage and they're poisonous and they've got a lot of poisons in them. But my God, you, you I mean... Are we really going to be saying the same thing over and over and over and over again? And then the other team, the other team, you've got these articles that are telling you how to argue against the anti-vaxxers, call out distortions in the science, work with confirmation bias instead of against it, uh, explaining how herd immunity works, and yet we've got, oh my God, a whole lot of scientists and doctors who are talking about this herd immunity and it doesn't work, but hey, just say it does work. Think about telling real people's stories and change the default. Ah, change the default. If parents are confused about the evidence, a common reaction is to choose to do nothing. We can blame another bias for that, the omission bias, which gives us the feeling that harm that comes from an action is worse than harm that comes from inaction. One response then can be as simple as having doctors use language that assumes patients are going to vaccinate instead of asking them if they will vaccinate. Another is to make it harder to vaccinate. States that make it harder to get exemptions, and that's exactly what states are doing now, uh, make it harder to get exemptions to vaccinations for school attendance, have uh, significantly fewer parents opt out than those that don't. That's being adopted in Canada too. Ontario's health mi minister has tabled legislation that would re require parents to take an educational class before being allowed to opt out. Talk about controlling people uh, Manitoba, Ontario, and New Brunswick have enacted legislation that requires children to be immunized before attending public school and tell her the message to build trust. A Guardian article. Um, February 15, 2019. What did I say in my video that I posted when the World Health Organization listed anti-vaxxers in their top 10 global health threats equating anti-vaxxers with Ebola and now we've got plague we've got plague incorporating 
incorporated, uh, bringing in anti-vaxxers. Wow. Okay. Well, what did I say? I said, you're going to see a real acceleration of the vaccine agenda and they're going to be coming out hard and that's exactly what we are seeing simply telling people they are ignorant has failed we need to find a better way to communicate measles is on the rise but telling anti-vaxxers they're stupid won't fix it I'm gonna read some of this and that's it I, I, I don't know what to do anymore one only has to stray into anti-vaxxer internet forums for a few minutes to see that they're stuffed with conspiracy theorists, opportunists, reactionaries, and worst of all, who you brisk, you brisk, tick, you brisk, tick, idiots, we're idiots, and yes, hubris is uh, our thing, and we're reactionary, we're opportunists, uh, opportunists, oh, and we're conspiracy theorists. Holy shit, guys! What the hell has this world turned into? Facts. Evidence. This is the vanguard of the anti-vaxxer movement. But behind that vanguard are a lot of concerned parents who are being convinced of wild and dangerous ideas. Because we, and by we, I mean those of us who recognize the incontrovertible fact that vaccines are essential. Oh my God. All right. Well, this is mainstream media for you. Okay. Get rid of all the anti-vaxxers. Why are we such a threat? Because we're conspiracy theorists and we are opportunists and reactionaries and we're idiots and we're stupid. Why are we such a threat? We are such a threat because we have facts and evidence to actually back up our claims that vaccines are dangerous. That's why we're a threat. But this gives people who don't know how to think, who allow government officials and mainstream media to think for themselves, it gives them permission to just continue to act like imbeciles who are in seventh grade attacking people. They've not done the research. Because if they did the research, they would learn. If they were open-minded and could just have a conversation with somebody who has done the research, they would learn. If they just went to a couple of channels on YouTube that uh, vaxxed TV, is it Vax TV? That channel. And see the countless numbers of videos with doctors, scientists, parents who are talking about vaccine injury. Okay. Oh, wow. A number of the anti-vaxxer vanguard may have started life as concerned parents, but have gradually sunk into increasingly extreme positions because the only communication they're getting from the other side is that they're foolish and irresponsible. That's right. That's right. So these parents, you're claiming that their extreme position is because the other side is calling them foolish and irresponsible. What? How unbelievably condescending can you be? Those parents who have gone to the extreme have done the research to find out what's happening with these vaccines. That's what's happening. It's not because somebody's calling them foolish and then they're backed into a corner in their extreme position. Holy my God. Almost every week the internet produces another diatribe against anti-vaxxers or a listicle of their horrifyingly stupid social media posts. Human beings as fact processing machines. That 
that's what we tend to think of human beings as fact processing machines. Well, unfortunately, that's what I used to think. But now I just think that most human beings have been, um, well, they've ditched facts and evidence. They're opinion based, opinion based, hostile machines coming at you with their opinions or their parrots. They're not machines. They're mainstream media parrots who come back, have no factual argument, and they just parrot back what their mainstream media or government officials are telling them. And they think they're so smart. Oh my God. Well, guys, we are really in deep shit here. It's, oh, this, this, our world has really become something uh, so surreal that, yeah, I want out. I do. I, I'm, I'm so, I'm tired. I, this is, you know, this is getting to be really so sick and depraved. Uh, <laughs> Anti-vaxxers are thriving because we live in a fact-phobic wild west. <gasps> We're the ones with the facts. Everything that, that, I mean, everything is being turned on its head. Most of the recent events in politics and society, uh, including the finding that measles cases are increasing, should be evidence enough that this is assumption, that this is assumption is entirely wrong. Mm. It, what? And that by leaning on it, we simply enlarge a gulf of understanding between us and the people we are trying to communicate with. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> we assume that if we make a factual argument loudly and often enough, people will eventually become overpowered by its inherent logic believe it, and even start arguing it in themselves. But that's not what is happening. They are not making an argument. They're not making an argument. We are frustrated that they cannot see the world in the same way we do. We call them idiots and chancers. We denounce their beliefs and then we wonder why they're not coming around to our way of thinking. If we want to defeat the anti-vaxxer movement, we need to understand why it exists and the increase in its popularity. Why are people waking up about vaccines? Because they're getting the facts and evidence that's why they're getting the facts and evidence and they're hearing from too many people who have been vaccinated or parents who have had their children vaccinated and now they're living the nightmare of having a child that's autistic or, you know, oh my God, I want this to stop, guys. I really, I want it so much to stop. I want the idiocy to stop because this is dangerous. This is dangerous because so many people don't think for themselves. They read these mainstream media articles and that empowers them, empowers them to attack more. And what is the result? More children. More children get destroyed. More children get destroyed. We need to look at the wider context that allow such a dangerous and obviously wrong-headed movement to flourish so unchecked. It might make us feel good to denounce anti-vaxxers as villains, but it doesn't seem to be working. No, it's not working because when people uh, regard the truth as something important when they are open-minded and they check into the facts and evidence that prove that vaccines are really very, very dangerous and are destroying so many people's lives. When the CDC on its own website 
has a VAERS uh, research tool, VAERS, Vaccine Adverse Effects Response System or reporting system, and you put in a few facts and the result comes up with over 3,000 deaths and most of them are infants and toddlers from vaccines. <laughs> and then I put in a search and I can't even remember what I searched. Vaccine injuries, but it wasn't deaths. Well, I put in vaccine, vaccine maker, um, not deaths, something else. And what did I get from the CDC website? It was over 600,000. <laughs> as long as the attempts to stop anti-vaxxers fail, more and more children will be put at risk. Everything is turned on its head, guys. Everything is being turned on its head. Everything. Yeah, it's kind of frightening that we're living this. All right, well. I don't know. I, 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 I actually... I, I think that maybe we are in a game because sure as hell this this ain't life anymore this is this is something very um, this is getting too surreal unfortunately we do have a lot who are on the other team Mix in flat earthers with the anti-vaxxers. Well, at least something they're useful for. Yes, what we're useful for? Exterminating the world's population. Yeah, well, hey, anti-vaxxers. We have been um, equated with Ebola according to the World Health Organization. This is a scary, scary time, man. This is no joke. 